Xiang, Tiger Li Bing Guoche and Changri La are my travel destinations in 2013 in the province Yunnan. The ancient city of Lijiang, with all the two-story historical buildings and the cobblestone lanes, belongs to the World Cultural Heritage of the UNESCO. In the morning the city is quiet and contemplative, in the evening this will change dramatically. Above the ancient city, on the Lion Hill, singing birds can get every morning fresh air. The pagoda is nicely located to provide a fantastic view on the hundreds of roofs of Lijiang ancient city. Inside the pagoda there are a lot of buddhistic paintings and small statues. Below the pagoda is Mu Fu's residence, a huge palace which is still preserved as it was built in the times of the Ming and Qing dynasties. The ancient city is full of shops with clothes, tea, meat and everything else tourists may need. And there is a big central market where fresh fruits, vegetables and meats are offered every day. Countless restaurants offer the entire variety of the Southwest Chinese cuisine. As soon as it dawns, the lanes of Lijiang get crowded and more and more noisy. People simply have fun now. There are so many places to try local delicious food. For Western tourists, however, some of them are very exotic and you need to be brave to taste them. All the shops have opened their doors until late in the night. And from dozens of crowded bars one can hear loud modern music. Come on, you 
Towards midnight, shops close and the city becomes silent. Only here and there, sentimental guitar music can be heard before the city goes to sleep. Shuhe is a small town close to Lijiang. It has a similar townscape and atmosphere, but everything is smaller, not so much noise, and there are less tourists here. This place is a favorite for professional photo shooting. <laughs> In the surroundings of Lijiang, there are villages visited by tourists very seldom. But before one can get there, often traffic jams cause delays. The reason is roadworks for a new 300 km long highway to make traveling from Lijiang to Shangri-La easier and faster in the very near future. Today I go with the driver, his private car and an experienced tour guide. On our way we have a nice stop at a local restaurant where we select the fresh fruit from the kitchen. Then we pass some small towns where tombstones are made and finally we get to one of the remote villages. It's very calm here, people are either working on their fields to plant grain and vegetables or they are sitting in front of their houses and smoke and talk with their neighbor. <laughs>
farmers use every square meter of their ground to cultivate grain, vegetables and fruits for their own needs but also to earn some yuan on the farmers market. A very comfortable bus leaves Lijiang at 9 am for the famous Taipa Leaping Gorge. The smooth bus ride takes about two hours and in the small town of Chiaotou, minibuses wait to bring travelers to one of the three or four guest houses in the gorge. Oh, what an adventurous bus trip! Underneath the road, the Yangtze River roars. From the riverbed, steep mountains rise to the sky. More than 4,000 meters above the river, the peaks of the Yarde Track and Snow Mountains, unfortunately often hidden by the clouds, reach an altitude of 5,600 meters. Nowhere else in the world there is a gorge as deep as the Tiger Leaping Gorge. There is one place from where steep steps go down to the riverbed. Oh, what a noise here! For their way back to the road, some tourists prefer to get carried up. Really a hard job, but on the other hand, it guarantees some income for the people living in the gorge. The next day I am sitting in a bus to Shangri-La. Now we are in a border area with Tibet. Shangri-La is an autonomous Tibetan prefecture and one can feel immediately that life and townscapes are different as in other parts of China. On the market square, fresh snacks are offered at which everything is focused on the meat of the yaks, which are the Tibetan highland cattle. But there are also local mushrooms and vegetables offered. Oh, my God. 
Here as well, shops string together similar as in other Chinese ancient cities. Front doors are protected with heavy colorful curtains made of yak wood. On a hill in the city center, a huge Tibetan monastery overlooks the town of Shangri-La. This place offers a marvelous view over the mere endless extent of the high plateau and the 6,000 meters high mountains in the distance. Next to the monastery is an over-dimensioned Tibetan prayer wheel. It needs at least 10 strong arms to set it in motion, but everybody who is coming here tries it, and mostly with success. This brings a lot of fun and it also should bring luck. In the temple, a few monks murmur their Buddhistic sutra and friendly figures smile from the sanctuary on the visitors. In the restaurant, an open fire, hot ginger tea and hot soup help to fight the cold. Here in the peripherals of Tibet, it's possible to eat with western cutlery. On the outskirts of Shangri-La, there is the huge Song Lin Monastery, the biggest Buddhistic monastery in Yunnan. It was built about 450 years ago at an altitude of 3,300 meters and is still in use nowadays. Steep steps lead to the numerous buildings of the monastery. The interior rooms are decorated with admirable woodwork, colorful wall paintings and noble tapestries. As it is a living monastery, visitors are only allowed to visit a part of the entire facilities.
On the roofs there are countless gold-plated figures. They serve as a symbol of the richness of this monastery. On the edges of the ancient city, a lot of private persons are waiting to offer transportation to the surrounding landmarks. They are all reliable, cheap and safe. I asked one of them to bring me to the Napa Lake, just 10 kilometers east of the town. At this time of the year the lake is dry and that's a great opportunity to explore the area on the back of a Tibetan horse. This is a very convenient way to get close to the yaks, pigs and sheep which graze here or muckrate for some feet. After a short walk I reach a typical Tibetan village. It is a contemplative place, very quiet. Domestic animals live on the roads. Here and there some houses are getting repaired and everybody is friendly to foreigners.
In the afternoon, the ropeway to the Blue Mountain Valley is the next goal which I reach by hitchhiking. The ropeway has two sections. The first one gets to an altitude of 4000 meters and the second one brings the visitors another 800 meters higher. Because of the thin air and the snowfall, I get out at the first section. There is a small shop which sells countless roots and herbs that grow here. Of course, people make photos here as well and they seem to like snowball fights. The airport of shangri -La is very contemplative. By using one of the few daily flights I leave the highlands and after a short stopover in Kunming I arrive at the town of Guilin in the province of Guanxi. In this province Guilin, the Li River, Yangshu and the Longji rice terraces are my travel destinations. While relaxing in a little Italian bar, I can see dancing couples on the opposite promenade. An old radio and a loudspeaker are enough to study here, surrounded by pedestrians, spectators and cars, new dancing steps with a lot of fun but also with meticulousness. Guilin is in principle a faceless big city, but in the evening a magical atmosphere arises due to the soft and colorful illumination around the four lakes in the city center. By taxi, it is about three quarters of an hour to Yangdi village. Dozens of bamboo rafts wait here for customers who wish to have a journey on the legendary Li River. It is so easy to find a raft. The luggage is stored underneath the seat and the craftsman commences an unhurried ride downstream. The karst mountains are wooded up to the top. This is a typical scenery of this landscape. After every river bend, new formations can be seen. What fascinating scenery for many hours.
About four hours later, the raft reaches Sing Ping, a small quiet town hidden behind large trees. This is an ideal place for an overnight stay and an ideal place to relax and explore the surroundings. There are not more than two or three hotels in Sing Ping, but new ones are getting built as well as new private houses. Family members and friends are doing this, not professional building companies. Sing Ping has only one big road with shops, restaurants and the market. Without bustle, salespeople wait for customers. They pass the time with an after lunch sleep, they play cards and they talk with their neighbors. <laughs> The bamboo rafts are constructed or repaired by the raftsmen themselves. Cormorants are waiting patiently for the next catch in the late afternoon. The next morning, Forley Village is the first destination, just 60 minutes by taxi. Here are the typical paintings of the Lee River as well as paper fans of all sizes are made in complex manual work. After another 30 minutes, the taxi arrives at Yangshu, a lovely town with 300,000 residents. The city center is quite small and all interesting points can be reached by just a short walk. This includes the municipal park with a marvelous view on the surrounding karst mountains and also the retired persons who do their best to entertain themselves by singing old songs accompanied by historical instruments. <laughs> Of course, many restaurants attract people with local delicacies. Then there are the shops. 
In some of them, women are weaving and selling scarves supported by flute music. Of course, this should also attract customers to buy the flute. Evening, West Street awakes. Many bars drink together, and until midnight, very loud live music treats the people who walk here from one end of the street to the other and back. <laughs> Without any doubt, the highlight of a visit of Yang Shu is the Impression Sanche Liu show, which is performed every evening on the Li River. The water and the bamboo rafts are the stage, and the cast hills, illuminated by pale and colorful light, are the background. And hundreds of singers and dancers show in seven scenes elements of the current and former life of the people living on the Li River. Without any visible loudspeakers, classical and modern music fill the entire space. Responsibility of the show has Chang Yi Wu. This is the man who also staged the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in Beijing in 2008.
Today, I am going by bicycle to visit some farmer village west of Yangshu. In order to make this trip as interesting as possible, I decided to go with a competent local guide. Her name is Mulan. She belongs to one of the minorities of Guanxi, works as a tour guide and knows the villages as well as other locations in the area very well. It doesn't take long and the city lies behind us. On small roads we are cycling through the farmland. 
A few small villages are located along the Oolong River, which is the confluence of the Li River. Sunshine day! Also on that river, Chinese visitors have a lot of fun when they do a trip on the bamboo raft. Farmers have to work with very basic tools. The only support they get is the power of their water buffaloes. Nevertheless, they use each square meter of their land to plant and to harvest. For washing the clothes, farmers women often go to the next creek because they do not have washing machines at home. Here and there are small restaurants, often hidden behind big trees. Now the right place to have a typical local lunch. As a starter, customers can pick fresh fruits in the garden of the restaurants directly from the tree. These kinds of restaurants don't have menus. One has to go to the kitchen and select from the food which is available. Today they have fresh vegetables and small water snakes. This one we eat for lunch. Wait a moment, sorry, wait a moment. Look. <laughs> I eat five or six of them with fresh spinach and rice and a cold Qingdao beer. Well, it tastes not bad. The meat is aromatic, with a good level of garlic. Anyway, I don't want this every day. After lunch, everybody takes a nap. The dogs, the cook and the guests. On the way back to Yangshu, there is a famous moon hill. 800 steps ascend to the top, where the hill has a big hole, through which the silhouette of Yangshu and the Karst Mountains can be admired. Many years ago, former US President Carter visited Moon Hill as well, and he planted a tree which grows now slowly. In the late afternoon we are back in Yangshu town. The ideal of the countryside had to give way to the noisy motor vehicles and cyclists have to put full concentration on the traffic. The last two days of my trip to Guanxi are for visiting the gorgeous Longchi rice terraces 100 kilometers north of Yangshu. 
Mulan is again my guide and her colleague Mr. Wang completes the team as a driver. Then the suit boat is that, the proper temperature and the good water. So first I will prepare the... On the way to the terraces, it is worth to visit Sanchi Tea Farm and try some tea. Here one can learn the specific ceremonies to prepare the tea. For each kind of tea there are specific rules for boiling the water and scalp the tea leaves. He said uh, made of the lid, the cup itself and cup saucer. In Chinese culture the lid is symbolized to the heaven. Of course the soup we have for lunch is also made of tea leaves. Hot. In the late afternoon, Mr. Wang is parking his taxi some kilometers out of Ping'an village because there are no roads going to the villages in the terrace. My suitcase stays in the luggage space of his car. I just take a small bag with me to walk up to the village on steep paths. Everything what the people of the villages need have to be carried up either by themselves or by their small horses, which can even walk on stairs. In Yashu it's buffalo doing all the work, but here is the horse. Ping'an village is located at an altitude of 1,200 meters on top of the terrace fields. About 300 people live here. It is cold and the terraces are hidden behind dense fog. Only a handful of guests are in the village and the restaurant. As a local speciality, people eat bamboo rice and drink rice wine with it. Amazingly, they call this beverage water wine, but actually it has a noticeable amount of alcohol. Well, this is bamboo rice. People cooking the rice in, look, bamboo, yeah? Why people do this? Because the mountain people, they can't carry the rice with them, mm -hmm. so they have to find some way, easy, convenient for them, and tasty good. So they bring the rice to the mountain, they cut the bamboo, like this size, they make a hole here, put the rice in, yeah, the rice without cooking yet, and then they burn, fire burning the, the, the bamboo, and the rice will ready after maybe 20 minutes it will be like this and you try it yum yum The next day, my last day of my visit to Guanxi province, I do a long walk through the terrace fields to one of the neighbor villages. The residents of these villages belong to the Chuang minority. They have their own traditions, beliefs and customs, as well as a specific architectural style to build their houses. So the rest field was op uh making by people in Ming Dynasty. It, it just takes 700 years. 
Then an old song of the drum minority sounds over the terraces. This is the Rinding Rinning Bridge, who was built in Zhuang Minority Village. So you could often find them in the middle of the mountain. And from somewhere, fireworks can be heard. With this, the local people pay tribute to their ancestors. The terraces are extremely steep and they climb up several hundred meters on the mountainside. The single lots are often so narrow that farmers cannot make use of any utilities. They need to do the whole work with their hand. <laughs> When building houses, the whole village is on duty. With so many people helping, the roof is covered in a few hours. Their big houses have a clear layout. The basement is for pigs, chicken and goose. First floor has a living and bedrooms for the family and second floor serves as storage floor. Here, here is uh, that's there our keeping. Uh, this is cooking area for cooking but not for people, for pig. Yeah? And the pig was the keeping another side. And chicken will be inside here and also keep all the stuff and uh, the first ground of the building. So the first floor only for the animals. This is the lobby and for beside of the lobby is a, a bedroom. Beside there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rooms. You know this? <laughs> this elder lady has got a new task. Now, as the work on the rice fields is too hard for her, she has got a new responsibility. Her job is now to make rice wine. And then they're cooking in the in the room. And it can be a rice, rice wine here. It seems as if she has a lot of fun with this task. The result of her work is a very strong spirit with about 55% alcohol and this shows how misleading the word rice wine is. Now in April, rice farmers start to irrigate the rice fields and a few days later they will begin to put the rice plants into the wetland. On the afternoon, Mr. Wang is waiting with his car in the valley below the village. We are driving back easy going to Guilin. On the next day, China Eastern Airlines brings me back to Germany with a short stopover in Shanghai. <laughs>